There are a lot of videos with tricks about how to fix a cowlick, but there are many types of cowlicks, many hair textures, many different goal hairstyles, and therefore many different valid approaches to deal with cowlicks. So instead of simply talking about tools, tricks, and products I use to deal with them, I want to talk about cowlicks from the scalp out to help you understand exactly what's going on to better equip you with the tools necessary to handle these inconvenient areas of your hair since your own situation may likely vary wildly from any examples I might show you. A quick internet search defines a cowlick as a lock of hair that grows in a direction different from the rest and that resists being combed flat. We all have built-in growth patterns, which influence the way that our hair lays. The way our hair lays easiest is referred to as the natural fall, and this is dictated by the direction of your growth patterns, the texture of your hair, and the length of your hair. You can find yours easily by shaking your clean, wet hair and seeing where it wants to go most easily. If anything sticks up, it's either too short to lay down, or you're pushing it the wrong way. Every hair will have some direction that it most easily wants to go. You just have to find it. On some people, it seems like their hair grows straight outward, and in many places on some heads, it might. But most commonly, it grows around a whorl, somewhere between the apex and the occipital bone, then continues to fall in patterns that move outward from this spiral. On most heads, this turns clockwise, but I've seen the occasional counterclockwise whorl, and I make sure to let the client know that they might have X-Men-like powers because they're so unique. Anyways, this is why your hair may slick back easily on one side, but not the other side, as one side is growing forward and the other side grows back. Sometimes halfway across the head, this direction will change, and you'll find hair in front that wants to lay opposite the hair growing out of the whorl. Sometimes you'll get just small areas in the corner of your forehead that decide to grow the other way. Sometimes right at the nape, you'll get areas where hair grows straight upward, pushing against the rest of the hair on the head, growing downward. Sometimes a person can have two whorls near the crown. These growth patterns come built in when you're born. In fact, the first feature I saw of my daughter was the growth patterns on the top of her head. Knowing they exist and finding out what yours are doing is step one. After that, we can decide if we're going to follow them or overpower them. But you don't want to make that decision until you know exactly what's going on with your growth patterns. Comb your wet, clean hair into its natural fall. If anything is sticking up, it's probably going the wrong direction. And if this is happening in small areas where everything else is laying nicely, you've probably got a whorl or a cowlick on your hands. Keep going until you get everything to lay nicely, even if it isn't the direction of your ideal style. Once you find this natural fall, consider looking for a hairstyle that matches your growth patterns. If you can momentarily comb your hair into a nice style with water alone, you can very easily do it with a hairdryer and product. While it might mean putting your part in a place that isn't favorable, Following your natural fall is the first and most effective line of defense against cowlicks, and if you can make it work, you'll have found your easy hair. If your natural growth doesn't allow for a good looking style, or if it's simply not the style you want, we'll have to change the direction your hair wants to lay. There's a huge myth that you can train your hair to lay in ways that it didn't used to want to lay. People will repeatedly force their hair somewhere as it grows out, and eventually it magically wants to stay there. Even when this approach does eventually give you the upper hand with your growth patterns, you're not actually changing the way that your hair grows. What you're changing over time as your hair grows longer and you keep styling it one way is how much your hair can bend because longer hair is more flexible, just like any other material is more flexible if it's longer. Because of this, you're also then able to have more control over how your hair sets, which is why your hair starts to cooperate more throughout the day. It's not that it started growing differently, it's that you're able to set it now. Your hair works a lot like a fabric, stubbornly holding whatever shape it's in as it dries, or as hot and then cold are applied, just like ironing a shirt. This is called setting your hair, and it happens every time it dries, or any time you hit it with heat from a hairdryer or an iron. We call it a wet set when the hair is held in place using a gel or pomade while it dries and sets in place. We call it thermal styling when the hair is set using a blow dryer or an iron. This setting of the hair is by far the most powerful aspect of hairstyling, offering more influence on the finished style than even the heaviest products. When you don't have enough length to fully control a cowlick and set it where you want it, you will get it to bend some from where it grows, but that's exactly when it sticks out, 
it can't make the full 180 degree bend to lay flat in the opposite direction. This is an awkward phase that a lot of people actually actively work to maintain. A lot of people, myself included, often opt to handle certain cowlicks temporarily by just cutting them short and letting them stick out. But that means the problem will grow back in a short time. It's only a good solution for someone who wants short hair and frequent haircuts. The long-term solution that lasts is to grow the hair long enough to bend all the way against the growth pattern and then to set it there daily by styling. With all of this said, I want to share my own thoughts on cowlicks based on my work with clients over the years. You see, cowlicks are a problem that mostly occurs in the head, not on the head. Most of us hate our cowlicks not because they actually look bad, but because we can't control them, and therefore we assume they look bad. If we look at celebrities and style icons, if you will, we can easily find many cowlicks. We just don't notice them because, well, people don't notice yours either. You notice them and you worry about them, but if they're left to run wild with the right haircut, they can actually look just fine. So let your cowlicks and growth patterns bother you only as much as you want to be bothered. Follow the advice I laid out here and pick a solution that works for you. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if this was helpful.